For those of you just joining us, we are about to get started. This is Terry from IMLS. And I would encourage you, if you haven't already written into the chat box uh, where you're from, that will give everybody on the line a sense of, of who's out there. And we've got a great uh, representation so far. And we know there's, there's some veteran folks on the line and some folks that are probably just testing the technology platform. And that is fine, too. But we want to welcome all of you. And we'll be kicking off um, our actual presentation in just a moment. I'm waiting for the top of the hour. I think I've actually got the top of the hour on my clock here. So keep typing in the chat box where you're from. We'll keep it open just a few minutes longer. And now you might have seen that the Q&A box um, is going to be popping up as well. And that is where we will take questions during the presentation. That Q&A box will only be visible um, for you if you've posed a question and for us on the other side here as presenters. So it won't function quite the same as the chat box, which we're going to have open during the breaks and at the outset for icebreakers. But we're not going to be using it um, a whole, whole lot during the presentations themselves. So I'm just going to do a few housekeeping announcements as we get started. Again, this is Terry from IMLS. Um, we do have all the attendee microphones muted in this particular platform. That's going to allow us to focus on the presentation content and cut down on the background noise. Um, but we will have those chat boxes open at the outset. And we hope that you all can find a way to to chat with each other and do some informal networking that way. Uh, we will have Q&A as part of each of our sessions, including this one for today. And you can submit your questions anytime during our presentations through the Q&A box. You'll be able to see your own questions. And then at the end, uh, where we'll normally reserve time for questions, we will get to as many as we can. Um, if we don't get to your question during the sort of live broadcast and the recording, we're going to get a transcript of the questions after the fact, and we will follow up um, with any unanswered questions that you have. So be sure to type us your questions as the content gets started, and we will, um, even if we don't verbally address it, we will get back to you. If you have any technical assistance issues during the presentation or at the outset of a presentation, please use that Q&A box to type in your issues and that is your help. Uh, some sessions in the coming days will use polls, and so we look forward to your participation in those. And just as a reminder, all of the sessions will be recorded. So we're going to send out details about how to access those recordings after they're ready and um, sometime after the conference. So with that, I'm going to officially welcome you to our Grants to States orientation. Um, I want to introduce all of our program staff. Since we can't be here with you in person and we're doing this virtual conference for the first time, we wanted to at least let you know what we look like. So from left to right, we've got myself, Terry DeVoe. I'm the Associate Deputy Director for the Grants to States program. And then we have three program officers. Um, the way that Grants to States is sort of administered is by assigning states in a portfolio to each of the three program officers. So you probably have a sense of who your program officer is at this point. But if not, just know Then we have Deirdre Gonzalez, who is actually our program specialist for the program. And Deirdre and I kind of work across all of the states in different ways, whereas the program officers are assigned to specific states. And then we've got Dennis Nangle, who is on paternity for him. He's just a baby. And he will be back with us probably in the month of June. Um, even though he's not live with us on this conference, 
you will see a cameo or two um, of Dennis, so, so stay tuned. He's, he's here with us in spirit. And then finally, on the far right of the picture, we have Michelle Farrell, who's our third program officer. So this session today that we set up is targeted really for new State Library staff who will be administering the formula grant that we, admin, that we give to you every year. We're going to review very basic information about the Grants to States program and some of the resources that you can use to administer the program. We do have a session in the full conference that's called IMLS Web Tools, and that will go into more details on some of these resources. Today, we're actually going to start with some vocabulary, because as a self-respecting government agency, we are full of acronyms. If we are mentioning them, Hi friends, I hope I'm back. Uh, can I get a sign that you can? All right. Um, sorry about that. My call dropped, and that happens occasionally. But we are we are going to pick right up where we were. So we were talking about acronyms when I got cut off, which maybe is a sign from the fates that we should not be using so many of them. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit about the acronyms at the outset, and uh, and then we're going to share with you some resources. If you have um, grants with IMLS that are not of the Grants to States variety, that will not be covered in this session. Uh, we do have a whole set of grants at IMLS administered directly by the agency, uh, whereas this is a pass-through program where you tend to do a lot of the administration of the grants. So if you have an IMLS discretionary grant, we would have you contact um, the program officer that you work with for that program if you have any questions. Again, we're going to hold questions um, in terms of answering them until the end of this hour-long session. And uh, that doesn't mean you can't ask questions in the Q&A module. We welcome you to ask them. It's just that we're going to let them queue up. And then when we get to the end, we'll answer them. So now I'm going to turn it over to Deirdre who's going to give us some vocabulary and acronyms. So Deirdre, take it away. Hi. Thank you, Terry, and welcome again. Um, I would like to start off with the glossary here. Um, here are some acronyms and vocabulary that are part of the program. The Museum and Library Services Act, or MLSA, is the broader IMLS statute that encompasses LSTA, also known as the Library Services and Technology Act. LSTA, as, a, as currently amended, is a subchapter of the authorizing legislation for IMLS. In 1996, Congress shifted the Library Services and Construction Act to the Library Services and Technology Act, LSTA, as subchapter two of the Museum and Library Services Act. This ended federal funding for library construction and replaced it with a focus on new information technologies. LSTA also encompasses IMLS discretionary programs. Implementing a population-based formula, the Grants to States program, sometimes referred to as G2S, is the largest source of federal funding support for library services in the U.S. State Library Administrative Agencies, or SLAA, are official agencies charged by law with the extension and development of library services. The LSTA regulations require each SLAA 
to submit a five-year plan that details library services goals. SLAAs must also conduct a five-year evaluation of service goals based on that plan. ACO, or Authorizing Certifying Official for the Grant, is the Authorizing Certifying Official for the Grant Award. In most cases, it will be the state librarian, but it can also be the administrator that the state librarian reports to. And the Chief Officers of State Library Agencies, or COSLA, is an independent organization representing state and territorial agencies designated as the SLAA. COSLA serves as a mechanism to help address challenges faced by the heads of the state agencies, which are responsible for statewide library development. Okay. And I'm having a little trouble advancing my slide here. Probably because it's Monday. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, let's see. On October 1st, 2019, very recently, as you know, IMLS switched our grants management systems to EGMS. EGMS is the electronic grant management system now used by all of the agencies. You'll learn a bit more about EGMS later in this presentation. SAM.gov. SAM.gov is the official system for award management website of the U.S. government. SITE allows grantees no-cost access to register and do business with the U.S. government, including updating or renewing your entity registration, among other tasks. The next item, the Federal Funding Accountability and Transparency Act, or as we like to refer to it, FAFADA, was signed in 2006 to reduce wasteful spending and increase public transparency of federal financial assistance and expenditures. The FAFADA Sub-Award Reporting System, or FSRS, is the reporting tool that prime recipients, in this case SLAAs, enter information on sub-recipients who have received grants of $25,000 or more. This will be covered more fully during the Web Tools session. The State Program Report, or SCR, is part of an online system that is specific to the grants to states reporting requirements for grant awards. Next is MATCH. MATCH is the amount of money, specifically 34% of the total program budget that our LSTA legislation requires from a state library to contribute toward the grant program each year. These funds are from non-federal resources, including state, local, corporate, foundation, or other non-federal entities. The SBR will automatically populate the expected grant amount, grant match amount. MOE, or Maintenance of Effort, the Libraries and Services, Library Services and Technology Act helps ensure that federal dollars enhance and do not replace state support for library services. To receive the full amount allowed by the LSTA grants to state formula, a state must maintain its financial support for library programs and services at not less than the average amount reported for the prior three fiscal years. If a state does not meet its MOE level in a given reporting year, its next allotment is reduced by the same percentage as the missed MOE. The law provides an opportunity for states to request a waiver of MOE under specific circumstances. Please refer to the Grants to States section online at imls.gov or reach out to your program officer for more information. And the next slide, a little bit more trouble. Thank you. <laughs> These are a few words that might be found on your actual grant award document. The federal government requires a business, in this case the SLAA, to have at least one of these numbers. While IMLS does not assign any of the first three numbers, DUN, TEN, or the EIN, IMLS does, however, assign the last one, FAIN. This is a unique number that is essential to use when you are communicating to IMLS about your award. Next. Madison will share more information on EGMS and communications. 
Thank you, Deirdre, so much. Welcome, everybody. Um, once IMLS has received word from the State Library that they have a new LSTA coordinator, uh, we will send a welcome message letting that person know who that program officer is and where to find information about the program. Your program officer will also send a message regarding the mentor program and who your mentor will be. The mentors are drawn from a voluntary group of experienced coordinators, so you will have two experienced people to talk to when you have questions about the program. Your program officer is the person to contact for the official interpretation of the program legislative requirements. Once IMLS has your name and contact information, we will also add accounts for you to the state program report system and the EGMS system. Now here are a few reasons to communicate with your program officer through email. Uh, this is a good slide to print out and keep handy if you have a question. Uh, we'll, you want to use email for allowable cost questions, uh, to notify your program officer that you have changed any contacts in the SPR, any issues or troubleshooting you're having with the SPR, any general feedback or questions that you have about the program in general, and then finally, with the quarterly grant accrual reports, you will also send those through email to the address that's listed on this slide. EGMS. Uh, EGMS Reach is used by IMLS awardees to manage your award. If you are a chief officer, authorized official, LSTA coordinator, um, a library development or finance officer, or any associated uh, contact with a current IMLS LSTA award, you will have access to the system in order to administer and manage your award. Through the EGMS REACH system, uh, you will have access to request payments and send official grant communications to your uh, LSTA coordinator. Uh, you will also be able to send official messages, uh, or, yeah, uh, excuse me, official messages to your program officer um, about official records pertaining to the award, and you have access to reporting schedules and previous payment requests. Now, in terms of using REACH messaging, um, as I mentioned earlier, REACH is the uh, official record-keeping system for IMLS awards. You would use REACH to communicate with IMLS for record-level correspondence, so official correspondence. Um, again, this is a slide also you'd want to, to print out and keep. Um, IMLS has a great deal of information available to you on the website, um, but you can communicate with us in terms of official records about equipment requests, so uh, purchases for over $5,000 per item, um, submission of certifications or signed assurances, uh, official MOE waiver requests, and as mentioned, payment requests. Uh, when in doubt, ask your program officer where you should submit what. Hello, everyone. Right. This is Michelle Farrell, and I'm going to talk to you now about the Grants to States Manual. When you go to the IMLS website, www.imls.gov, you can find the Grants to States Manual. It's a key resource. So if you're new to the program, which I know most of you are, uh, or at least a number of you are, judging from the uh, sign-in here, you're going to want to go to this site. So you go to the IMLS website, click on Grants, then under Grants, go to Grants Programs, then select Grant to, to States. Once you get to that page, as you see on the navigation bar on the left, you can see over here, there's the Grants to States Manual. Click there, and it will take you to a number of resources. There are sections in the Grants to States Manual on the award cycle calendar, financial requirements, financial performance reporting, like the SBR, site visit information, IMLS guidance that we've already put out, uh, the actual statutes and regulations, which many times people want to know what the names and numbers are, presentations and conferences that we have given in the past, forms that you need to use to submit things, and of course, our contact information. 
Here you'll see under the financial and performance reporting section of the Grants and States Manual, these three very valuable guides. The first one, SDR Overview and Guide, gives you a full picture of the state program report, including how to log in, reporting concepts, how to add projects, intents, subjects, activities, outcomes, tax, financial reporting, validating, and certifying the report. The nice thing about this particular source is it has hyperlinks. So when you go to a page, you'll see a link, and it'll take you right directly to where we have full information on how to do it. The next resource is the IMLS State Program Reporting Requirements. You can look at this first in a way. It's about 146 pages, and that provides information. It describes the SPR framework, including a list of all SPR questions, that's questions that appear in the SPR report, and defines SPR data elements. And the third resource is the SPR reporting system, user documentation, the State Library SLAA view. This is a guide to users through the SPR system with screenshots and a glossary. Um, when you're looking at this particular presentation, this is only 34 pages long. Um, the notes section, what you will see is you won't see you'll see a picture of the PowerPoint presentation, and the notes are up in the left hand corner in a little chat box. So you just press on that. Here is what the front page of the grant state report looks like. Your program officer can set you up in the SPR system by creating an account for you. Your username is going to be your email address, and we will send you a password. You can change your password by going into the account management section of the SPR after you've logged in. And you'll note here on the left, please use Chrome or Firefox as our recommended browsers for this system. Issues with saving and editing can occur when you open two browser windows or tabs for the grant to state report at the same time, so it's best to avoid that. This page, this is inside the system, and here's where you find the state info page, which is under the accounts tab here. We look right up here. Here's the accounts tab in the SPR. Having up-to-date contact information in the SPR is very important. You will need to need it to certify your report. IMLS also uses the contact listed here when sending important communications. Please note that only you can update this page. So that's very important to keep in mind. Um, once you have updated this account management section, state info it's called, you click on that and this page comes up. Um, You'll see there, and then this whole page comes up. You want to, after you've updated it, and make sure you have all the various positions filled with complete information. After you've done that and closed out the SPR, then you can send your program officer an email telling us that you have updated the state program report in the state information section, and that you've added so-and-so. Mary Jones or whoever uh, is a new person and what their position is. The DOMS and EIN are not required to save the data, but they are required to certify the report. Also note, the parent organization should match the name associated with your DOMS number. So that's another thing to keep in mind. And here we have the various user roles. There are four user roles in the SDR. We started off with three, but with some input from the states, we've added a fourth. The LSTA coordinator and the ACO, that's the authorized certifying official, they have permission to manage subrecipient user accounts in the system. They may establish user accounts as well as update loss or forgotten passwords 
from your subrecipients. SLAA project data entry users can also um, add someone add, review, or edit all projects, but they cannot validate the report, certify the report, or change state goals. It may be useful to add someone in this role who also works at the state library and is running a project. Use the menu navigation to go to accounts management subrecipient access, click add user, and enter the contact information. Email address will be used in logging in. Enter and confirm password, select the signed recipient with the affiliated institution, select save user. One thing to note about um, users in the system is that you can't really ever delete anybody once they've been entered into the SDR as a user. You can, you can under, let me go back a slide and show you. We're talking about over here. You can go into subrecipient access uh, right in here. Let me move that arrow over there. So you're an account management subrecipient access. You can go in there and make them inactive. So you're not deleting, but you're making somebody inactive in the system. Um, this is the next point I want to make, which is the length of the, SL, the uh, LSTA grant award. The grant award covers a 24-month period of performance. So for example, the FY2020 award starts October 1st, 2019, and ends September 30th, 2021. We have had a number of years where there was a continuing resolution called the CR for federal funding. And as a result of that, we have been sending out the award notification after January. So that sometimes confuses new LSDA coordinators. Uh, a best practice, by the way, is to finish off the funds for your previous award, let's say FY2019, for example, before you start drawing down on your most recent grant award, FY2020. And here is one of the documents that you also may want to print out and use. This calendar is something that you will want to keep on hand so that you know when items are due to IMLS. If you look here, you will see that in the coming dates, uh, right up here, uh, you've got July 6, 2020, your quarterly grant accrual report is due for the FY 2019 and the FY 2020 award. IMLS developed this worksheet that we're looking at now, worksheet to calculate grant pool amounts, because there isn't an official federal form to do that. Each quarter's accrual must represent the total expenses for active grant awards that a grantee has incurred during the grant period, but is not yet submitted to IMLS for reimbursement. Because two federal fiscal years typically overlap, in a grant period. Quarterly accrual information will cover those two separate active grants. Submit this information no later than four business days after the last day of the quarter. At the end of the quarter, please send an email with the grant numbers and the total grant accrual amount for the current award year in the body of the email to IMLS, it's LSTA, dash qrt accrual at imls.gov. And what I want to point out here is if we look down here at the numbers here, the first box there with the numbers ls, oo, xx, that's the way our numbers always were for our grants, grants up until this current year. With 2020, the grant numbers you'll notice here a different numbering. They will end in OLS dash, and the last two figures are the year. So in this case, it would be OLS dash 
20. But I just wanted to point out our grant numbers have actually changed the look. Here you will see a picture of the 2019 Grants and State Conference attendees showing some of your colleagues who were there. And this above that, the picture is the web address for the listserv that all LSTA coordinators who are interested can sign up for. This listserv was developed with LSTA coordinators in mind to share information on practical aspects of administering the LSTA grants. Coordinators can ask their colleagues questions regarding procedures, forms, software use, etc. It is maintained by Ross Fuqua at the Oregon State Library. This is the address up here. Uh, questions about federal funds and IMLS policy should, however, be sent to your program officer. We're going to give you the official answer. IMLS is not responsible for the content of this list, but there's a lot of good stuff there, and it's great to dialogue with your colleagues. It's a great group, and I've found lots of them using it, especially because of all the new legislation. So now we'd like to take some time to take your questions. And I think we're going to see them voluntarily. Yes. So uh, this is Deidre. Um, Heather has a question. She says that she's not an LSTA coordinator. However, she does, um, sorry, I have to make the screen a little bigger here. It looks like she does supervise or provide supervision for the coordinator. She wants to know if she can have a mentor. That's a good question. I, are <laughs> we are set up, I, I will tell you, Heather, we are set up, um, we like to support the whole state library, but the reality is, is that we actually have things set up to work with the coordinator. So most official emails and conversations go back and forth with the LSTA coordinator. Most of our training involves just the LSTA coordinator. This year is the first year we've actually opened up our conference, ironically, because it's virtual to um, other people as well. So, um, but we will keep that in mind, and I think um, maybe Terry will weigh in later or something about whether we can actually um, assign more than the um, rest of the, let's say, rest of the state library staff. It really depends on the mentor and how many people they've already been assigned. So uh, we have very great mentors. They're really good. And they're very willing to work with the LSDA coordinator. And they probably might be open to other people, but we really have to uh, run it all by them and see if they'd be interested and just check on what their workload is, because they are actually all just volunteers. A good question. And currently, that is it for questions, unless there are more. Heather says thanks. <laughs> well, this is Terry. And while others are thinking about questions, I might just toss out that um, sometimes we, we talk about myths within the Grants to States program and things that you might not be aware of. Uh, one myth that we often bust is that when you submit a state program report to us that, you know, you're done in December and we're going to just review it and it's going to be great um, and you won't hear from us except to say, congrats, it's done. That's usually not the case because we do have the program officers read those reports very carefully and probably 90 percent or more of the time, states are making edits to the report sometime between January and March before they are recertified and finalized for the year. So there is no shame in being told by your program officer that we would like to see some edits to your SPR. And so we just toss that out as a myth that we would bust for the program. And if there are any listening veterans on the line from states and 
and you have things that you would have wanted to know when you were first starting the program, we invite you to type those into the Q&A box and we can surface things like that as well. Are there other myths out there? We will take other questions too. I'll go ahead as we wait to see if any other questions come in. Another myth that we sometimes bust for the program is that we, you know, as a federal agency, there's a clear divide between feds and the states, and we don't want to hear from you. We want you to manage the program, and if you have problems, work them out for yourself. Well, that is a huge myth. We definitely want to hear from you. It's a very much a partnership program between the feds and the states. And to the extent that we can help you head off any issues, we would love to hear from you up front. We would be grateful to have your questions at the outset. And so that um, when you have an assigned program officer, we encourage you to be in contact with them anytime you feel like you might have a question to raise to IMLS. So that is another myth that I would bust for the program. Please, please know that we are accessible and enjoy and want to hear from you. Okay, Terry, we do have a question about current grantees wondering what's going on with site visits this year. We are in a very unusual year. And to some extent, I, I can't speak for what's going to happen to all the, state, the site visits this year. We have to figure out, um, so at the moment, IMLS staff are all working remotely. We have to follow the federal government guidelines about when we work and go back to an office scenario and when we're able to travel. So we're going to be checking to see what kind of restrictions there might be on that side. We also want to follow your lead if in your vicinity where you would be hosting a site visit there are other kinds of restrictions or things that would compromise the ability to have a site visit, then we would you know, be happy to talk about some alternatives and maybe thinking about rescheduling those. But I think for now we're going to tackle those on a case-by-case -case basis. Hi, this is Michelle. I am bummed because I won't be going on my site visits as I have planned. <laughs> Makes me very disappointed because I love going out there and meeting with people individually and being on the ground and seeing what you're working with and meeting the people in the field who are carrying out the LSTA program. So I have to tell you, it's, it's an adjustment for all of us. Okay, we have another question. Um, when will, will we be receiving five-year plan guidelines? I'm sorry, let me start that again. Will we re be receiving five-year plan guidelines during the next couple of days? Well, this is Terry. I can say that we did not this year build five-year plan content into our conference. We were thinking we would definitely be covering some of that next year. The good news is we already have our five-year plan guidelines approved by the Office of Budget and Management and up on our website. So you can look at those anytime. They are in the Grants to States manual area that was pointed out earlier by Michelle. And if you have any trouble finding them, just let your program officer know, and we will get those to you. But this year, we, <laughs> we are, we are going to focus on uh, topics that, that we thought would be uh, very pertinent for you to know about, uh, specifically CARES Act and COVID-19 response. We've got some great um, presentations on the data that you submitted to the SPR for the year as well as some perspectives from the states uh, because we want to be sharing best practices in these forums. So we will, we will um, if you have specific five-year plan questions that you would like to know about, let us know 
and that will help shape next year's program, and we can certainly respond to things in the interim um, as you have individual questions. Okay. Uh, Madison, um, we have a LFT coordinator who is relatively new in the position for just over a year. However, um, this coordinator was not assigned a, a mentor. Is there any way that they can still get on assigned? Yes, of course. Tara, I'll connect with you after um, the orientation, and we can, we can get you on board with a mentor. Thanks for, thanks for flagging. And Michelle, we have someone who would like to know if they can volunteer to be a mentor. Absolutely. We are always looking for new mentors, and we'd love to have you on board. So uh, send me an email at mferrell at inls.gov, and we'd love to add you onto the list. Thank you. And I see there are a couple of questions um, who are following up to Tara's question about getting a mentor. I would definitely advise you to reach out to your program officer to have a more detailed conversation about how you can move forward in, in trying to acquire a mentor. I also want to raise up, this is Terry, um, in addition to the great questions we've been getting in, we have an awesome testimonial from one of the LST coordinators about um, how great her program officer has been in fielding questions, and she always appreciates the willingness to listen and provide feedback. So you didn't just hear it from us. Your peers are here to tell you that we want to hear from you and answer your questions. Well, we can stay on if there are some folks that have lingering questions. The IMLF staff can stay and, and answer those for the next few minutes. Um, we have come to the end of our content for this session, and we are so grateful that all of you were able to tune in, test out the technology platform, and be with us in person for our first virtual kickoff of this event. We have a great couple of days in store over the next few days. And tomorrow's program is going to get started a little earlier than today's orientation session did. Um, so it's 1 o'clock Eastern time, which may be different for you. Um, but that will kick us off with our um, welcome and IMLS updates, specifically around the COVID-19 response and the CARES Act. So we anticipate um, connecting with you again then, and we are so grateful that you were able to tune in today. Thanks, everyone. And just a quick reminder, the session has been recorded and will be available afterwards if you would like to revisit it. Looks like we're putting the general chat session back up as well. So for those of you that want to communicate with each other, that is now an option. We will leave that up for a few minutes as well, and then uh, folks can see each other's responses. Hmm.